Hi guys, so I just wanted to make this slightly unscripted video about how to update your model in Mari. So uh, this model is a model from one of my Montori and I will be using it as a support for this uh, demonstration. So just to present you with the model, so this one has been done by uh, Morgan. So Morgan is doing an amazing job at learning how to um, become a creature artist. And she's currently working on a Xolo. And the idea was for her to learn how to do texture and to learn how to use Mari. And she's wondering about how to uh, update the UVs and update the model. So she just started to have the model done in uh, Maya and she started with one pass on the UVs. But the idea is now we have this pass on the UVs and we just want to update it so we can get more resolution on the head. And because we are also learning how to do procedural texturing. So we can make sure that even if she updates all the UVs from one model to another, or if she updates her skull from one model to another, then she will be able to keep everything she's been doing so far and make sure that she, she can learn how to transfer things. So let me show you the evolution of the models so already looking much better than it was before. So again, amazing work from Morgan. So I really um, encourage you to have a look at our portfolio and maybe get in, get in touch with her if you are looking for a concept, a concept sculptor, animal concept sculptor or modeling TD to add to your team. So she's doing amazing work. So this is our model. So starting with the UVs, so what I will do is to show you the old UVs versus the new UVs. And this is just like a really quick pass I did to add more resolution, add more pixel density to the, to the head so we can get more resolution where it's needed. So here, for example, we have the old, old UV set that she provided. And what I suggested to her is, okay, we want to get more resolution. Overall will be ideal because this is a Xolo. So the idea of Exolo is to have like a skin that is not covered by fur. It's basically like a, a sphinx, uh, the sphinx cat of the dogs, let's, let's say. And again, we want to see skin pores all over the body. So what we want to get is more resolution. So we can get like, for example, 4K for every UDIMS. And here we'll be missing a bit of resolution with this current um, uh, UV layout. So what I'm looking for is here adding more, more resolution to the head, but as I said, ideally will be to make sure that all the texture density is equal to the resolution of the head. So we get like um, enough enough resolution to get skin pores also on the rest of the body. So I just did this quick, quick and fall to again, make sure that I could have a, a new model for the demo. So this is old versus new. And you can see that here we have much more definition. The size of the square is smaller on the head, meaning that we have more definition. And we also got rid of the deformation, the heavy deformation we had on the snoot, which means that we'll have better time when we'll be projecting our texture in, in, in Mari. So first thing first, what you want to make sure of is that your model are overlapping in the 3D world. Like here, if I'm putting this back to the zero position here, I will get the model will be overlapping. Doesn't have to be 100%, but as far um, as close as possible. So what will happen is that basically the position of the of the pixel from the old model, the old UVs, will be world projected on the position of the pixels on the uh, new model. So that's why you want to make sure that they are overlapping. So now that we have that, we have these two models overlapping. Uh, you could also change entirely the Topology doesn't matter. You just want to make sure that the shape is looking the same and you have UV that has been unfolded, but yeah, it could be an entirely new topology and this will still work. So I will take the old, um, not the old one, I will take the new UV mesh and then I will export it and I will export it as an OBJ because it's less EV and for what we want to do is totally enough. So call it body new UV, and now let's dive into Mari. So this is what the model look like in Mari, and um, definitely looking great. So that's, again, Morgan Moore. She's learning how to do texturing in Mari, and she's learning how to project texturing, XYZ, um, skin pods, 
on our model and how to make our model look as realistic as possible. So great work from Morgan and what we want to do together is basically update this model from the old UVs to the, to the new one. So here, what are the windows or uh, the palettes I have opened here is basically the objects. Another one is an old property. We'll not need it for the purpose of this video, but just to show you what's inside the different nodes I will play, I will play with and what I will project or what I will transfer from one model to another will be the Marie displacement uh, channel. I will not play with any other channels uh, for now, but just as a way for you to understand what need to be to be transferred is basically all the information that has been hand painted. So here we have the Marie layer, um, Marie layer displacement that has been hand painted. And this is what I need to transfer because it's working on the old UVs, but it's not working on the new UVs. So if I want to import a new mesh here, what I will do is I will select my current mesh, my current uh, body, do a right, right click, add a version and load this version here. So I just need to open it. And then the new version will basically become available here. So this is me switching from the old version to the new one. And as you can see, the map, the paint layer, the paint node need to be transferred because the information has moved in the 2D space, in the UV space. So let's do that together. We'll go back to this layer and uh, do the transfer together. So the only thing to do really a uh, simple, simple step is go into layer and do a transfer. So here, a um, couple of things we want to look at. So I will not be able to do it right away because I'm currently missing a channel. So the way I'm working in Mari in with the node graphs is that I don't need any channel to do, to do my work. But the problem is Mari is expecting a channel to uh, be present in my node graph so it can um, it can learn or it can localize the different nodes into this channel and it, it can understand that you want to transfer to transfer it to the new to the new body UV. So nothing to select here. Uh, my channels are empty. So what I will do is I will create a channel. And you can think about this channel as if everything that you want to transfer um, can be put into this uh, into this channel. So that way I can simply name it transfer channel. I could create a channel, sorry. 4K, 16 bits, um, scale out and check because we are working on displacement here, but I will rename it my transfer channel and put everything I want to transfer into this channel. Place it here and connect the inputs that need to be transferred into this transfer channel. I'm going to do it like this. Double click on this channel now. Okay, seems to be to be filled now with the information I want. Okay. Yeah, looking good. Actually, I think I need, yeah, I need to check the scalar data. So the way the transfer work or the way a channel work in Mari is basically whenever you create a channel um, in the node graph or you create a channel in the node graph, the channel will basically be empty. But when you create a channel through the channel palette here, you will see that, for example, here, let me create another transfer channel or let's call it temp, okay, trying not to localize it here in my node graph space, g, temp, okay, put it back where I want it to be in my node graph. And so the way it's working, basically, whenever you create a channel in the channel palette, you create a, a merge node, a bottom transparency and a paint node. 
And what the transfer will be able to do is that it will be able to localize every merge that are present in the channel. So here we are speaking about the uh, transfer that is present in the, lay in the layers transfer. So for example, here you can see that now uh, I've just opened it and I have my base merge that have been localized into this channel. So I'm able to transfer it to the, to the new mesh and to the new UVs. So that means that whatever you want to transfer, you will have to place it um, before merge and you will have to create this merge. If you don't have any merge, like for example, let me disconnect things here and I just have my merge, my sorry, my term channel that is empty, no information in it, nothing is connected, there is no input whatsoever. So if I go into layers, transfer, and you can see now that my available nodes have disappeared from this uh, transfer, transfer windows. So I want to make sure that I have the information that are connected well, and I want to make sure that they are connected into merges. So every pent layer that I want to transfer need to be connected into a merge. So let me kill this. I don't need it anymore. I don't need that anymore. And uh, let me have a look at this transfer channel. I will open the new body, new UV uh, into my list of objects. Double click here, go back into layer and do the actual transfer. So transfer need to be done from the source, which is the old UV. So dog to merge is an old UV. And then I want to transfer it to the new UV, which is version body underscore new UV. And I want to select the um, merge I want to transfer. So basically we just want to transfer the area where we have the uh, merge information that, or sorry, the paint information that has been done. And the paint information are present in this red node, um, M disp underscore layer. So I will pick it like this, add it to the list and click OK. So you can see that Marie is actually calculating the transfer, doing it by baking uh, from the old UVs to the new UV or projecting from the old UVs to the new UVs and then transferring the data into the new MDisp layer name MDisp underscore layer one. So depending on the complexity or the number of UDIMs you will have already, this may take a certain amount of time. So this one is okay. We do not have like too many UDIMs. We are just having like six UDIMs, I think, uh, which means that it will not take too, ma too much time doing the transfer. Once the transfer will be done, what we'll have to do because we just transfer the first part of this node graph is that we'll have to clean up ourselves and we'll have to do, to redo the connection. But as you can see now, I have my information, my former information from my paint nodes that have been baked onto the new UVs. So if I'm looking at what is happening here, correct informations are happening on this, um, on the 3D space um, on, on the, in the viewport of, of my mesh. So what I want to do is simply to recreate the connection. So I will put that aside, okay, um, clean the connection because I do not need that anymore. Simply copy and paste the former nodes that are procedural and not this one. Control C, Control V. Okay, I can kill this node because I don't need it anymore. Have a look at what is happening here. Reconnect my M displayer like it was in the former node graph. 
and now I'm having the same exact information as the one I had before. So this is me with the new UV sets in uh, my, uh, my uh, viewport. And if I'm having a look at what were happening with the old UV sets on top of the old model, you can see that the information are similar. So this is how you can transfer data from one model to another. And again, nothing too complicated. You just make sure that the information are on a paint layer this paint layer is connected to a merge layer, then this merge layer need to be connected to a channel. And once this connection is happening, go into layer, transfer, and select the information you want to project from one model to another. So this is it for this tutorial. I'm happy surfacing guys. I hope you find some useful information in here.